Exacto. Good morning, race fans, and welcome to Podium Esports coverage of the Formula Hybrid Plus Electric Wheel-to-Wheel -wheel Grand Finale, live from iRacing's virtual New Hampshire Motor Speedway in Loudoun, New Hampshire. My name is Justin Prince. Alongside me is my colleague, Taylor Burris. Our producer this morning is Ryan Bauer. Ryan is using cameras created by the great Dougie Beard. Today we get ready to go racing at New Hampshire Motor Speedway's road course, Taylor, and it's going to bring many challenges for our competitors today as they've spent plenty of time preparing for this event with students from universities from both the United States, Canada, as well as India taking part in today's competition. It's a great way to showcase the talent and skills of all those involved here and at a track that will showcase the driving capabilities of all of our competitors here today. The New Hampshire Motor Speedway road course is unlike any other roval configuration we're used to seeing, such as at Daytona, Charlotte, and even Texas. This track will definitely showcase the talent of having to manage the track as well as managing certain parts. You have hills, you have inclines, even banking in the middle of the corners, whether it be on the oval or on the back half of the road course. So drivers are going to have to take their time, learn the track, and make sure that they put on the best show possible because a lot of great people are involved and I'm pretty sure that they want to be the ones to represent their school to the best of their ability as well as be able to apply what they've learned over time to be able to perform well today, Taylor. It certainly is. These guys are phenomenal when it comes to experts on hybrid and electric technology, especially in the world of motorsports. And as we see here, as the constant changing of the world of motorsports is with hybrid power, now even electric and hydrogen power being considered in the world of motorsports, Drivers are and technicians as well as engineers are trying to hone in those skills and try to find new ways for all of us to enjoy motorsports that we know and love, but also still make it clean as well as where we can have a great way for the environment as well. Absolutely. Some of the universities taking part in today's action, keep in mind, include 
schools such as Yale, Northeastern, the University of Waterloo, Lawrence Tech, some of the universities taking part in today's competition all from across the globe, Taylor, having the opportunity to be able to compete and show what they can do. We also have some blue ribbon drivers who will be able to compete for today's action. Yeah, it certainly is. These are some of the drivers who are a little bit more no well-knowing when it comes to driving on the simulator and on the track. We even have a couple of people who are part of the Northeast Region's SCCA, which is the Sports Car Club of America, and the Northeast Region. This is one of their famed tracks that they make sure that they come to. Absolutely going to be an interesting race today. Let's take a look at your podium esports race analysis for today where there will be two heat races with 20 minutes apiece heat one will see the grid based on practice for the student teams with the inverted grid blue ribbon drivers will also be inverted it will also function to where for those heats it will be a tortoise and hare style format where the blue ribbon drivers will be starting at the back of the field for a standing start heat two will have the grid based on heat one with the same inverts included as above so keep that in mind for today. The Blue Ribbon Drivers will be the competitors with numbers in the 300s today. The Electric Teams in the 200s and the Hybrid Teams will be numbers 1 through 5 for our competitors today, Taylor. It certainly is. It's going to provide a little bit of an interesting situation of this cat and mouse style racing where we put our Blue Ribbon Drivers a little bit later in the start to see how well they stack up against our competitors who automatically have a head start once we get things going. I find this to be exciting and also a little interest to see who will come out on top at the end of the race. And keep in mind, one of the interesting parts of this format is the teams have had the opportunity to be able to work on their setups as allowable on iRacing. The Blue Ribbon Drivers, meanwhile, though, will utilize the base setup with high downforce, with no modifications allowed. In other words, it's going to be the true test to see the driver skill for the Blue Ribbon competitors, but as well what the drivers have learned for the various schools to be able to set up their cars here for today's action. That is going to be the most interesting thing involving today's race, Justin, is to see what really is makes the best when it comes to driving. Is it setup that also helps make a good driver a driver, or is it just straight skills that we see that can help win these races? It's kind of a fixed versus open setup type deal, and I'm really interested to see how it's going to be. It's going to be very interesting to see how things fare out for today as you see some of the drivers from across the various universities currently practicing for today's action but one of the drivers standing by today is the editor-in-chief for the roadshow and editor at large for cnet it's tim stevens tim welcome to the broadcast hey thanks for having me first things first tell us and the viewers here at home a little bit about yourself and the work you do in your day-to-day -day job whether it's with roadshow or cnet yeah, so I uh, run Rocho, which is uh, CNS Automotive Platform, and day-to-day, uh, -day, uh, yeah, basically making sure that we've got uh, all the right cars going to the right people on my team. Uh, and then every now and again, I'm lucky to uh, get to test some cool cars myself, do some reviews and that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, so basically reviewing and, and giving previews of what's, what's the latest in automotive technology and on automotive scene in general. When and how did you get yourself interested in iRacing? Well, I've been sim racing for a really long time now. I actually got into sim racing back uh, in the F1 2001 days when there were a lot of mods you had to go online and find and download. So that was back in the, the early 2000s. And I've been on iRacing pretty much since it launched. So uh, yeah, I was really excited to see uh, you know some more attention being brought to the sim world. And it's been great to see it grow uh, since that time. What inspired you in turn to be involved with Formula Hybrid plus electric in this event? such as today's uh it just seems like a really great program for for education in general obviously you know with uh, with covid over the past 12 months and change uh, things have had to change so i thought it was a really interesting approach to basically take some of the engineering mindset and try to bring that to the sim world and basically try to optimize uh, setups in game i thought that was a really creative uh, solution to to the problem and uh since i'm such a huge sim nerd uh, i thought it'd be a great opportunity to, to kind of help out some of the students indeed is there any advice you would give to the teams competing today from your perspective for today's action with your sim racing experience? Yeah, for me, it's always about, uh, you know, knowing your pace, knowing what kind of lap times you can run and then just running that, not trying to push too hard, not getting yourself into trouble, uh, you know, keeping your nose clean and finishing the race is most important, I think, for me anyway. 
Absolutely going to be interesting. By the way, what is your favorite story from the track, whether virtual or real, when it comes to this type of racing? Uh, the coolest thing I've gotten to do was uh, I got to go to and excuse me, I got to go to Japan and run a race uh, that's actually featured in Gran Turismo. If you've ever played Gran Turismo, you're probably familiar with the uh, MX-5 Miata Endurance Race, a three-hour long race that's really grueling and really hard. I got to go to Tsukuba in Japan and actually run that race for real in a real MX-5, uh, which was a huge, huge thrill. Uh, so that's actually based on a real race, which a lot of people don't know, but they run that every year. And yeah, a couple of years ago, I got to go over and do it, and it was pretty amazing, I got to say. That's absolutely amazing with the real world experience. Well, on that note, thank you very much for the time today, Tim. We'll let you get to practicing for today's action. Thanks very much. Yeah, I'm going to need a little more practice myself. <laughs> Tim Stevens, once again, editor in chief at Roadshow and editor at large at CNET. Now, also standing by is Whip Wiley Cox from the NER SCCA. He now joins the broadcast booth. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Now, first things first, for the viewers at home, also, let you tell you, tell a bit about yourself and some of the work you do with the SCCA. Most definitely. So I'm with the uh, New England Region SCCA. Uh, we've been the partner with the Formula Hybrid Plus Electric Group since 2005 to run their dynamic events. Um, so I got involved with the SCCA doing autocross, which is how a lot of people get into it. That's you know what you see cars out in the parking lot going around cones and things like that. Um, and we had a connection with uh, one of the Formula Hybrid folks, um, uh, Doug, back in 2005, who came to us and said, we want to put this event on up in New Hampshire. We've got permission to use the track. We need somebody who knows how to run dynamic events. And so they came to us. And we organized you know eight or 10 people to come up here and we set out a little autocross course for them and some braking and acceleration zones. And then what you're seeing today is pretty close to the actual endurance course that we run. We run the upper, the upper part of New Hampshire road course, not the oval part, but we've got most of what we do for, we set out for the students for the endurance course. So uh, this is my 15th year being involved in this. I missed one year, it's the 16th year of doing it, but I missed one year in the middle somewhere. How has it been like bringing this experience over to iRacing? And in turn, what attracted you guys to bring this event to the sim racing world? Yeah, good question. So obviously last year, everybody knows what was going on. Uh, you know, New England region uh, shut down most of its events, uh, but pretty much everything for most of the summer of the last year. We didn't do any in-person events. Um, and so we actually ended up holding for the New England region, we ended up hosting a charity event as an iRacing event as well. We normally do an in-person charity fundraiser with auctions and things like that. Uh, we moved that to iRacing in April of uh, 2020. And that's when I first actually really got into iRacing. And that was really successful. We raised, you know, close to $8,000, which isn't too far off of what we normally do. Um, and so I've been involved with Andrew, uh, who's been in, you know, NER forever as well. And uh, both of us were just kind of thinking about this when we were talking with, with Mike and uh, Jess, who, were, you know, who run uh, Formula Hybrid kind of for the administrative side. And this really seemed like a natural fit. We, uh, we've had a lot of success doing our charity event. We didn't see any reason you couldn't do something similar. It's the same track. You know, uh, the cars that, that we're able to uh, get the students here using have uh, similar types of configurations to what the, the real Formula Hybrid cars do. And we got a ton of support from iRacing. We got a ton of support from the Formula Hybrid group. McLaren and a, a lot of the other folks um, really leaned into this uh, with us and made it, um, I won't say a no-brainer, but made it very easy for us to, to get this all together. Absolutely very interesting. What's your favorite story from this type of event that's developed from this transition over to the virtual side of things. What's your favorite story when it comes to some of the drivers in schools that have taken part? I think the best part about this is um, being able to bring together, um, for me, I've been working with you know a lot of the Blue Ribbon drivers. We really looked at the New England region uh, folks that we had, both our, our virtual iRacing drivers, but those are all people that are driving real cars too. We went there first, but Andrew and I also reached out to folks in other leagues that weren't even associated with New England region. Um, and so we've got a couple of folks, Logan who's here today is from another league that I, that I race in as well. And really I think the best part has been the feedback we've heard from those drivers that just had a blast doing this. They love the driving part, they love the communication with the teams. I love the questions that they uh, that they got from them and the feedback that they were able to give, and uh, I think you know it, 
even if you know we fully expect to be back in person for for 2022 doing real dynamic events but for some of the teams that can't make it, even though they can't get the, they can't manage to travel or they couldn't get their car together, I think this could still be a supporting event even when we're back to doing real live dynamic events. Very interesting indeed here. Is there any advice you would give to the teams competing today from your perspective? Yeah, I, I, what I would say is uh, be patient driving these cars around. They, you know, like a lot of other open wheel cars, you've got to get them set up for the corners, right? Don't try to push too hard through the corners and don't wear your tires out in the first uh, in the first couple of laps. Um, yeah, you know, save the car. You'll have more speed toward the end of it. You know, the car takes a couple laps to uh, to come in. The tires get up to up to temperature. Um, and the same thing Andrew's going to say, you're not going to win on lap one, but you can definitely lose on lap one. So everybody, you know, be nice out there to each other for the first couple laps till the cars get warmed up. Thank you once again for joining us the broadcast. We appreciate you joining us. And also, thank you for your support of Formula Hybrid Plus Electric, Wiley. Anytime. Thank you very much. Bobby Cox once more from the New England Region SCCA. Now joining us in the broadcast booth is Director of Formula Hybrid Plus Electric, Mike Chapman. And Mike, first things first, welcome to the broadcast. Thank Good you morning. Very much for the time. Good morning, uh, indeed. Good morning. Thank you very much for, for inviting me. First things first, tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you do as well when it comes to Formula Hybrid Plus Electric and all the work that's done with this organization. It's, it's a great question. The Formula Hybrid Plus Electric uh, competition really ends with this, uh, with this event this morning and then we start immediately. Uh, we start to uh, try and, and, and get volunteers on board sponsors on board, teams on board, take a look at the events that, that we have planned for the year and set the schedule for the whole year. I mean, normally we're at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway kind of end of April, early May. Um, but obviously with this year and the pandemic and last year with the pandemic, it, it changed things up quite a bit. Um, so it's a lot of planning. It's a lot of working with the sponsors, potential sponsors, a lot of working with the teams uh, to really bring everybody together for this event. Indeed, and you mentioned some of the inspiration, why to go to iRacing. Basically, how has that transition been for the past couple of years or so to go to sim racing for an event such as this and to have the unique challenges that come with that? Yeah, this is really, this is our first year with sim racing. And uh, as Wiley had mentioned, he did a, a charity event using sim racing. And I saw that, a couple of our other uh, advisors saw that, and we thought, you know, this may be a good chance for us to uh, have a little bit more fun because we're, because we're virtual, we're not on track, but also have a, a learning situation involved where we, we help the students learn about uh, race car setup, we help them to learn about how to give feedback to drivers, how to take that feedback and what to do. So this is really our first, our first year with sim racing. And, uh, you know, without Andrew and Wiley, we couldn't do it. Uh, without Angela and, and Vince, Angela at iRacing, Vince at McLaren applied, we, we wouldn't have been able to pull this off. And we're looking now for next year, um, how, even though we're on track, how we'll be able to uh, insert this event into next year's competition into 2022. Again, going to be very interesting to see how things fare out with that. And what has been some of the feedback you've gotten from some of the students in the universities during the process for this event? Really extremely positive. Um, 2021 was just a, a tough year for everybody, a uh, tough year for the students, for the colleges, for the sponsors. I mean, usually what our students do is they design and build a, an open wheel hybrid or battery electric vehicle and then bring it up to Loudoun uh, to test. And many, many of our uh, universities were closed down virtually. Uh, even if the students could get to their lab space, they couldn't have enough students in the lab to really work on the car. 
So this gave the, the students a way that they could work together, even though it's virtually, but they could work together, they could interact, they could learn about race car setup. So we, we've gotten some very positive feedback from, from the students, from the colleges, and from the Blue Ribbon drivers. I mean, we've, we've heard from several that, that have said they've never had to give feedback to a race engineer before. And, and this, this opportunity uh, was really eye-opening for them. And it's something that, that I think that um, it, it's something that we intend to continue with. Indeed, and when it comes to today's race, is there any advice you would personally give to these teams today as they get ready for today's action? I think the main thing is everybody just have fun. This is the this is for bragging rights only. There are no points uh, to be scored at this event, so just go out and have fun. I think at the end of this broadcast, we'll be able to give the results of the whole competition for both the hybrid and also the battery electric vehicle classes. Uh, but right now, this is for bragging rights. Go out and have a blast. Thank you very much for the time, Mike. Okay, thank you. Mike Chapman, once again, the director of Formula Hybrid Plus Electric joining us. Now joining us is Andrew Benoff, also from the New England region of Sports Car Club of America. Andrew, thank you for time. Thank you for joining us once again on the broadcast today. Thank you guys for uh, having me and thank you guys for uh, broadcasting this event. First things first, tell us and the viewers about yourself a little bit and the work you do with the SCCA. So currently, uh, I serve as the Assistant Regional Executive for uh, NERSCCA. Um, we oversee a whole bunch of events uh, in New England across all of our different specialties. Um, we have road rallies, rally crosses, uh, autocross, which is racing around cones, and wheel-to-wheel uh, -wheel road racing, uh, which is where I've uh, spent most of my 21 years entire life with the club. Uh, my father was the RE back in the early 2000s when I was growing up and uh, was a racer himself. And now uh, I just uh, about two months ago completed uh, the first step in getting my uh, road racing license. That's really good to hear. Absolutely, Andrew. And now when it comes to this event, talk us through your involvement and the interest as well for iRacing because it's talked a little bit about by one of your colleagues at the SCCA about this transition over to sim racing for this event. What's it been like to get involved and how did it get involved with sim racing from your perspective, Andrew? So um, I actually started out in sim racing thanks to my uncle, who's also a racer, who was like, you know, this is a way for you to get some cheap practice time in 2016 before I even had my street license, or 2015, my bet, before I had my street license. And, you know, go practice and learn how to drive in uh, around other cars. Um, you know, I had done NASCAR games as a kid growing up. And, you know, fast forward, I was doing iRacing off and on. Um, and uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, one of our uh, my friends, Ryan Field from SCC, from NER, who's an autocrosser, uh, we went through and we said, all right, uh, we're all bored. We're stuck at home. Let's do some iRacing. Uh, you know, I hosted a couple events and we're like, hey, this is fun. Uh, let's go through and uh, create a league. Um, and so we did that and uh, come, you know, middle of April, May, uh, we said, uh oh, we can't host our, you know, big charity event, the uh, Race Against Leukemia. Uh, so I had met Ryan through doing the 24 Hours of Lemons and I uh, asked him if he would be interested in helping us out. We did that um, and it was a massive success. Then come uh, December, uh, Wiley said, hey, uh, you know how we did such a great job on the um, RIL event? Let's go through and uh, do uh, this again, but let's do it for Formula Hybrid. I said, I'm 100% on board. Just let me know what you need from me. And uh, we went through, uh, we worked with Mike and Jess, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, but uh, we're 
hoping that uh, her son and uh, her are doing well at home. Um, but and we worked together and uh, brought Ryan in once again and you guys and uh, have done this awesome event here. And you're actually one of the top drivers in the practice charts right now. What's been the preparation like to be able to be essentially one of the key figures now for this race and one of the drivers who will be one of the blue ribbon competitors? Uh, so my preparation has been, this is my shakedown track. Um, any car that I'm going through and I am testing, you know, that comes out on iRacing, um, and we're going through and I'm testing it here uh, at New Hampshire. This is my home track. I've been coming here my whole life. Uh, I've raced on the track. I've flagged at the track. Uh, so I've seen a whole lot of ways to get around this track. Um, I know I'm not the fastest driver, but I think I have some pretty good race craft and I know where to get around people here. So I think that's kind of going to be my key and uh, being able to have that patience to get around people. Is there any advice you would give to your fellow competitors for today's action to where, of course, today a big day with the grand finale, what advice would you give to your fellow competitors today? I would say patience, patience, patience. This is a tight and technical track, and it's not very wide. So, you know, be patient and uh, wait to make those passes. It's a decently long race, so you got plenty of time to go through and make the pass right. So that's going to be the key to the race. Thank you for joining us in the broadcast. We appreciate you joining us, and also thank you for your support of Formula Hybrid Plus Electric. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Andrew Benna. Joining us for the New England region of Sports Car Club of America. Now joining us in the broadcast booth is the field application engineer, or one of them, I should say, from the McLaren Applied. Vince, thank you very much for joining us in the broadcast. Thanks, guys. How are you guys doing today? Doing really good. Thank you very much for the time. First things first, tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you do with McLaren. Uh, well, at McLaren, you know, uh, we have a basically racing history with formula one and all of the advancements and technologies that develop in formula one through the testing and through just trying to go faster and uh, we take those technologies and package them up into uh, applications that we can then um, apply in the field uh, to all forms of motorsports uh, we provide the ECU global technology for Formula One, uh, IndyCar racing, and NASCAR uh, Cup Series. And uh, that allows the governing bodies to uh, make sure that everything's on the up and up and allows the teams to do what they need to do uh, with the engine programs. Really interesting indeed. And for you, when and how did you get involved, first of all, for Formula Hybrid plus electric and in term? With sim racing. Uh, yes, I think um, uh, at first, my first look at it was uh, when one of our other engineers was uh, spending time with Formula Hybrid, and I got interested in it, was helping kind of on the side a little bit last year. Um, and then when this came up, this is, you know, I've been sim racing for a while, so it was a chance for me to get to blend my sim racing. Uh, with a chance to work with some students that are coming up in the field and getting ready to uh, embark in racing and trying to grow racing as much as possible. That's really close to my heart now as I get further into my career and toward the end of it. Indeed. And when it comes to this event, what advice would you personally give to the teams competing today as these drivers Get ready for today's grand finale. I think the big thing is to be patient. Um, there's a lot of speed. You know, Gregory's already in the 58s, and uh, that's a quick time. Uh, Cohen, Jules looking really good 
Um, all, all those guys are super fast. I think um, even though it's only a 20 minute, two 20 minute races, I think that um, it's still going to be a game of, of really watching what you're doing. There'll be some guys going off, you know, on cold tires, things like that. I think patience will still be uh, very important, but you'll have to keep your pace up because there's not a lot of time. Yeah, just 20 minutes per heat for today's action. Thank you very much for the time, Vince. Absolutely. Anytime, guys. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Vince Wood from McLaren Applied. His field application engineer. I'd like to thank him for taking the time to speak with us. Now, Taylor Burris is standing by with one of the drivers for today, Corbin Rice. He's from Lawrence Tech. Hey Eric, how's it going, Corbin? Going pretty good. Do it. Great to hear. Of course, Corbin Rice is the team captain for the Lawrence Technology University. And Corbin, go ahead and explain to us your role as team captain for today's event. Uh, so specifically for this, um, so competition is right around graduation, obviously. And uh, at Lawrence Tech, the whole team is uh, composed of seniors. So a lot of the team kind of just felt like it was uh you know kind of a uh how would you say a a, a kind of sad send-off we didn't go to competition or, or anything like that we did have the car physically made but there wasn't anything to kind of like make it feel like we had completed um so a lot of them have kind of just for lack of a better word fallen off the face of the the earth so i kind of took on the competition myself and said if you guys you know with summer jobs internships stuff like that if you guys want to go ahead and do that I'll try and finish up the uh, the competition portion and uh, we'll see how it goes and so I'm kind of a I'm, I'm a one-man show at the moment well let's talk a little bit about this you know with the universities getting involved what made this university lawrence technology university want to get involved with the formula electric hybrid as well as other inf avenues when involved sim racing as well as motorsports in general so i can tell you uh we've had a we've had a hybrid team probably since uh maybe 2010 uh maybe even before that uh, it used to be that we only had the combustion engines, you know, normal um, normal formula. And then a few years ago, I think in 2019, the team said, well, we want to try and do fully electric. And the school said, sure, go ahead, as long as you get the funding, of course. And um, so ever since, I think, uh, 2019, we've been trying to make uh, a fully electric car. And the last few teams have been... Uh, been having issues and and luckily this year we were able to both be the first team to actually compete in the competition uh, beyond the um, just normal static events of turning in reports and uh, the first team to also have a running electric car and Lawrence Tech really is pushing for um, in general for uh, stuff similar to simulation they're really heavy on esports um, been trying to get esports big at Lawrence Tech. Uh, they're always obviously thinking about the automotive industry because Lawrence Tech is by Detroit, uh, Michigan. So um, of course, lots of auto automotive influence there. So um, with the way that uh, cars are going, uh, being more um, not necessarily simulation based, but um, you know, by themselves, autonomous, there you go. I'm trying to think of the word. Um, Similar stuff uh, to simulation racing could be used for trying to, you know, just like we did for competition, figure out what's wrong with the car, talk to drivers, and then optimize them, which is obviously very useful uh, in modern uh, automotive industry and the automotive industry of the future. How confident do you feel about behind the wheel of the USF 2000s, the car of choice that we're using here in New Hampshire? Uh uh, not too bad. I'm I'm putting in a few uh, good laps. This is probably the best best run I've had so far. Um, but I I can say without a doubt I am not I am not a uh, a professional uh, i racing driver to say the least. <laughs> well, before we let you go, Corbin, to get back out on the track, anyone you would like to say thank you to, or anyone you would like to give a shout out to? Yeah, obviously, thanks to all the sponsors. There's too many to name so just thank you in general to any sponsor of both the 
uh, hybrid competition itself and our team. Uh, and then obviously like to thank my team for, uh, you know, being there to support me, even if I'm, I'm taking on this competition myself. Uh, the virtual competition, I should say. Um, I'm more than I'm more than glad to be uh, to be their captain. So, I think I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to you today. That is Corbin or Corbin Rice, of course, from the Lawrence Technology University team captain and driver for today. But as we now move on to our next driver that will be joining us, it is Ricky Karen from the University of Vermont, and he is their mechanical team lead. And Ricky, how do you feel out there so far? feeling pretty good i have a setup that i feel would be strong in both a fast time and also endurance so i'm feeling okay honestly um cold tires are definitely something i need to get used to um i didn't actually have that on while i was testing so <laughs> uh, what what's one of the things that you find interesting with the similarities between the virtual world of driving as well as when it comes to real life and trying to apply both of them Honestly, the way you have to fight a car, it's very interesting. Like, I have a, I was fortunate enough to um, buy a force feedback wheel, um, and f just the feeling of when you lose the car, having to fight back at it, it feels almost exactly like um, actually driving a car in that situation. Um, and I know that very well because in Vermont. It snows a lot, so I need to deal with icy and snowy conditions in the winter. I certainly agree. I have some close family up that way in the Vermont area, so I completely understand what it means with the cold weather and snow. Uh, but as we look at today's race, your thoughts on this track here, New Hampshire Motor Speedway's road course configuration, you know, it's a lot different compared to a lot of other roval configurations. Yes, it is. Um, it's very... I honestly prefer this to oval racing. Um, I like turning both ways, and I... I don't know. It's just something when... Because when you get a nice connection of corners, then you can go back and forth and get a nice groove going. It's very satisfying. Certainly is. Well, before we let you go, Ricky, is there anyone you would like to give a shout-out to? Just the whole Aero UVM team. They've really tried this year. Um, it's been very hard with a lot of um, uh, social distancing. Luckily, we were able to get in the shop, so some people were able to come in. But um, some people weren't uh, because of the uh, virus. So just a shout out to my entire team. All right. Well, that is Ricky Karen from the University of Vermont. Thank you very much, and good luck in today's race. Next up to join us is Gregory Corsello. And Gregory, how do you feel out there today? Of course, you are the team president for the Northeastern University. Feels really good today. Uh, got a quick lap time down and feeling consistent. So really excited for this race. One of the things that I would like to try to touch on with you is with the the formula electric and hybrid competition you know formula electric and hybrid is so critical nowadays in the world of motorsports how do you feel with this with what you are learning and applying in the real world could we see the progression of this type of racing further advance in some of the major forms of motorsports yeah i think uh this is a, a really critical time especially for hybrid powertrains i think we'll you know we're already seeing that in formula one and i think that's going to expand to a lot of other motorsports um, but it's really a great time to be learning all about you know hybrid powertrains through the optimal hybrid event that we did this year for the competition all the way to uh you know the electric powertrain which we are competing in um this year so it's all Really, really important stuff to learn, and it's a kind of perfect time to learn it. Certainly is, and of course, you are the fastest car out on the track today with a 58.927. You think you have what it takes to bring home the checkered flag here? I sure hope so. It's going to be all about staying clean, um, getting some good clean passes in a couple of the open passing zones, and then staying consistent, of course. So, yeah, well, let's hope so. Well, anyone you would like to say thank you to? I'd like to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to every single member of the team 
Um, we couldn't have got here without each and every one of you and all of your commitments. So, yeah, huge thanks to the team. Of course, that is Greg Corsello, the team president for the Northeastern University. And as we have our final guest to join us, Mr. Hirade Sharadi from the RV College powertrain team. Hirade, welcome up to the booth. How are you feeling out there today? Yep, good. Well, one of the things we wanted to ask is your thoughts on this track here in the virtual world, the New Hampshire Motor Speedway's road course configuration, and how it would try to be different compared to other configurations of road course on the iRacing service. Uh, so to be very honest, I'm quite new to simulation racing, and uh, even in simulation racing, I've played you know more of arcade racing and so on. And an oval track is quite new to me, and handling on the oval and how to balance the uh, speed and downforce uh, and so on on this track is quite complicated and even being able to get the exact brake setup with you know being able to change it uh, according to how much fuel load is there on the car and uh, many complicated things were uh, taught to me in this uh, will with this how have you felt with the opening of all of the information that you've been able to receive from your colleagues as well as drivers to help you learn more about this so the, the proof of all the information that I've gathered from the time of iRacing and Formula Hybrid is clear in my lap times. I mean, when I started, I was somewhere near a minute and eight seconds, a minute and seven seconds. And now I'm down to a minute and uh, point, point 0.6, which is, you know, quite close to where I want to be and uh, as, as good as I can be within the time frame that I've been given for the last, uh, you know, few hours and few months that I've gotten to practice. All right, well, before we let you go, currently as you're sitting 10th in the time charts right now, anyone you would like to give a shout out to or say thank you to? Uh, well, there's always Andrew, our BRD, who helped us, uh, you know, through our initial setup and our final setup. And my team members who constantly kept looking at things we could change on the car based on my feedback. That would be it. One more thing right quickly. What is your main goal when it comes to working with the RV College powertrain team, your position you work with? So I myself am an electrical head and uh, we are very we, we, we work very closely to achieve our goals with uh, regards to the powertrain and working with the drivetrain chassis and suspension. So what we try to do is just maximize with the time we've been given, with the resources we've been given to be very efficient. That is true, especially with how the world of e-racing when it comes to such as Formula E or Formula One, the powertrain and drivetrain are some very key important attributes when it comes to saving power as we go through there. But good luck to you in today's race, and we look forward to seeing what you can do. Thank you. Have a nice day. Of course, that is Harari Shirati, who is coming in. He's currently 10th on the leaderboard. I believe we have one more guest ready. As we're waiting for him, I believe it's going to be Cohen Evans, who is going to be joining us. As we get him up into the booth, he's excited to come up here and we're ready to go as Cohen. Welcome up to the booth. How are you feeling out there today on the circuit? I'm feeling uh, great today. Well, you're currently second with a 59.13. And how long have you been involved with iRacing and sim racing? Uh, at least four years right now, I think. Okay. What would that, how have you noticed the difference of changes when it comes to since you started four years ago? iRacing has kind of been in a boom since last year, especially during 2020. So what are some of the small changes or big changes that you've noticed since joining the service? Uh, well, when I first joined, I had no idea what I'm doing or what I was doing, but now I'm pretty familiar. I know exactly what I'm doing when I hop into a race and make setups. Uh, this last year has been great for iRacing, and I uh, uh, love to see all the new people uh, joining the service. It certainly is. And tell us a little bit about your role when it comes to the Formula Hybrid and Electric. Uh, well, I uh, just joined recently, so uh, I haven't had uh, much work with them. Okay. You currently are with the Indiana University or Purdue University in Indianapolis. What is your role with the university there when it comes to this? And so uh, I'm right now a motorsport engineering major. So my school is like, I think the only school in the country that has a bachelor's in motorsport engineering. 
So that's kind of why I chose it. And it's about three miles away from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So I thought it was a good choice to go. Certainly is. And with that opportunity with this university, with the motorsports engineering degree, how do you, important do you think that would be to further your career and hopefully attain a certain goal in the world of motorsports? And if you already have an idea of which type of motorsports division you would be interested in going into? open right now but I think this school is great it has uh, a lot of connections all over the motorsports engineering or the motorsports community so you know maybe I can uh, find something someone to uh, talk to and maybe get a career out of it of course well before we let you go anyone you would like to say thank you to say uh, hi to my family my brother parents uh, I'm pretty sure they're watching so of course, you cannot forget to say hello to everyone. Well, of course, that is Cohen Evans from Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. And as the time continues to clock down, Justin, we are getting closer and closer to the start of heat race number one here. And we have 14 cars out on the track getting ready. And as we look at timing and scoring, Gregory Corsello, who we just talked to a few moments ago, is your fastest time with a 58.92. Cohen Evans also in second. And then Jules Pere is your top three. A lot of different drivers. Of course, we have the hybrid and electric divisions in these two separate classes. I want to give a shout out as well to Jessica Kinsey for the work that Jessica has done as Gournay manager at Formula Hybrid plus Electric for this event. As we're down to the final minute or so of preparation for today's action. By the way, third on the board, David Kenna, Kenia for at the moment. As you can see, currently trying to sort things on down. Your final thoughts before we get to the standing start for heat number one, Taylor, for today. Standing start is going to be so critical for these drivers as they try to take their time as well as make sure that they get the best possible jump. It can be a little hectic at times on standing starts. Cars can sometimes bump together a little bit and trying to get into turn one. But the good news is with it being an oval road course configuration or roval as we like to call it, the turn one, turn two configuration here at New Hampshire is a little bit wider so drivers can get in there a little bit better compared to maybe a turn one hairpin style we see at most road course configurations that we see here in the United States or around the world. We're just about all set to go for today's action as the drivers will now make their way towards the starting grid. Again, it is reverse order of the practice as well with the goal with the blue ribbon drivers towards the back. But at the front of the field, it's Richard Karen, Ricky Karen in particular, with Gregory Corsillo in second position. Bailey will start along with third minute. Oh, Rick with Cohen Evans in fourth. In fifth position, it is Kenya, along with Rade Charadhi, starting in the sixth position. Seventh will go to Corbin Rice, with the eighth position going to Chandra Singh Rajput. Rounding out the nine drive, top nine for the non-blue ribbon drivers will be Treyaz Rahman, Tim Stevens, Vincent Wood, Andrew Benna, along with Logan McKenzie and Quinn Browno will be the among the drivers who will be your blue ribbon competitors. With that, let's take a look at your Google Earth for today's action. We're at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Competitors will have 14 turns to drive around today here at the Magic Mile. But the competitors are all set to go and are now rolling. We are underway from New Hampshire. Field already getting underway as they make the run up into turn number one right now as they head through their turns one. It's going to be Bailey Menrick who will be taking on the race lead as they did down into the first hairpin turns three. And we'll see right there. We see David Kenny and taking a peek to the inside as they now leave the oval and head to the top of the hill. Two by two towards the back of the pack so far is one driver stalled towards the back of the field was Corbin Rice with a bit of a spin from fifth position. The rest of the competitors nice and solid to start things out. Up in the race lead so far it is Menorick who is currently holding on to the lead by a couple car lengths currently over her Kenya heading off in towards the infield through inside of New Hampshire's turns three and four for the oval portion. 
as they rejoin the Oval. You're on board right now with Co and Evans from the Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, right there in third. He's going to try to get into the slipstream, but he is under heavy attack right now with a couple of cars behind him, Andrew Brene and Greg Corsello in hot pursuit, but... Menorek is doing a great job of holding on to the race lead over the rest of the field as they head into the tight hairpin to transition out of the road or oval onto the road course section of the course. Here comes Andrew. He'll take a peek to the inside of Evans as they go side by side, almost taking it three wide as they head toward the bank curve. Benna taking a peek now to the high side, trying to lean his way in through that banking. And that's one of the tough parts when it comes to this track is going to be that said banking is going to be just trying to make sure you hit that turn properly as majority of the other turns are more flatter here, Taylor. They certainly are, and that's what provides a little bit of an interesting challenge compared to the bank corners that we see here in most racing at New Hampshire. This provides a little bit of grip for some drivers, but also it makes it interesting of making sure you don't lock up your tires as quickly. As we heard earlier in some of our interviews, drivers need to learn with these open wheel cars to take care of their equipment early and try to save it for the end of the race to really put down the pressure on their competitors here today. And I got to say, these five drivers, Menorick, Kanae, Evans, and Ben Bena, as well as Corsello. These five drivers are putting on one beautiful show as they battle heading down into the banked oval or banked section of the course as we now see Bena get around David now for that third position. Evan make the pass so far. It's been a good start for that 371. It's already made his way inside the top three in the early portions. The lap times, by the way, one minute per lap estimated for today's action. These drives are expected to have about 17 or so to go when they get to the stripe. This time buys. The race lead still separated by now four tenths. Menorick and Evans have been pretty much the class of the field this race as they work their way down into the oval section of turns one and two. Evans gets a good run as you're on board with him. He gets a great run down the back straightaway as they enter into turn number three. He'll dive it to the inside, complete the pass. Will Menorick try to cross over? He cannot. New race leaders on lap number four. Cohen Evans, your race leader as you're on board with Menorick. As they head down into the bank section corner of turn number six. And then make the climb up the hill before heading down the roller coaster. Before rejoining back on the oval section of the course. Greg Cursillo. Cursillo, I should rather say, among the drivers. Meanwhile, who are trying to make some moves. He's lost several positions since the start. And it's now working his way towards the high side. You can see he's trying to poke his way around a couple different directions here. He's just not been able to find a way on by to move up for some spots there in the 207. He certainly is. It's a little bit difficult for him right now. He's going to try to go to the outside right now of Kanai as they work their way through the turn one and two oval section of the course. You're on board with Kanai now as they work their way down the back straightaway heading into turn three. Logan McKenzie now has joined him. Contact is made between McKenzie and Corsello. That will send Corsello around a tough break for him as he will drop to at least eighth position, maybe ninth, and a tough break for Gregory Corsello in that 207. Tough break for the Northeastern student as you'll see in our replay right here. You can see just that bit of contact coming from behind sends him off in the tire barrier and he does indeed fall to ninth position. Keep in mind that damage is off for this event as these drivers looked out fun for their grand finale here today. So he'll be able to keep on going. The downside is he's lost a ton of time as a result. He certainly has, as we've had a couple of other issues for some drivers, as we see the pass right now between Andrew Bena and Bailey Menorick, as they'll go side by side through turns one and two, as you'll see, Menorick is on the top side, Bena is on the, Bena is on the bottom of the racetrack as they head down towards turn three, Menorick tries to have the inside advantage to throw the block, crossover contact is made between the two, and here comes David Kanai, he'll move up into third, and he wants more. As you're on board with David, they'll head down into bank curving. A little bit of issues right there for Bailey Menorick. As they head through there, Menorick will shut the door on Kanai. And back single file, they go once more. Keep in mind, some interesting backgrounds as talked about with some of these students earlier on in the broadcast. 
for David, a virtual vehicle tuner for the University of Victoria in Canada. I just started iRacing as of this competition. So able to be able to gain a lot of sim racing experience here over the past few months here with this competition. That's one way to really get yourself involved with it, and especially in this battle. And what a track really to showcase your first time talent here at this circuit with the road course configuration here. Oh, big issue right there. Up and over. Hard contact. And uh, there goes David back on pit road. Let's take a look at the replay here as looked like a bit of an earlier break, possibly. We'll have to see had the run coming in through turn two for right now there uh, that's what we call a uh, little bit of aggressive blocking right there if i would say so uh, i think andrew was trying to throw the block but david thought he could make it stick and unfortunately for david and for andrew their day is pretty much not going to be up to the good of course damage is off here but still a tough break for our competitors as we now watch the rest of the field right now go through Logan McKenzie sits in that third position trying to catch back up to Andrew but for Cohen Evans he's checked out to about 4.4 4.5 seconds that's after some of the trouble in the battle for second on back so far some of our blue ribbon drivers have been able to make their way through the field keep in mind behind them Logan McKenzie has been able to work his way to third position. Vincent Wood is currently battling with him for that spot. The last position on the podium for heat number one, approaching 12 minutes to go on the clock. And Bailey has shuffled down to fifth position after that incident. So, some of the Blue Ribbon drivers have been able to take advantage of some of this attrition to gain some positions here. They certainly have, as we now watch these feet drivers work their way through. Looking at timing and scoring right now, Andrew Bana has been actually closing some ground on Cohen Evans. He's picked it up just a hair. As let's see what Andrew runs as it comes across the line. He was actually about four tenths faster, but Logan McKenzie, fastest car on the track, who still running in the 59.67, actually just ran his personal best on that lap as well. So he is definitely a man on a mission as he's about half a second back from Andrew as they approach turn three. 59, 6, 6, 6, 7, 7, I should rather say. Court at that time by, as we take a look now, this battle for second. Kinsey, you can see, feels a bit more confident, it seems, under the braking to close up that just that little extra bit in these corners. He certainly does. He's, no, he's hitting his mark superbly, as well as hitting the apex of each corner as they work their way through. Let's see what happens in the transition back onto the Opals configuration of New Hampshire as they dive underneath the inside groove racing here of NASCAR turn three and four before rejoining the front straightaway here. It's still about four tenths of a second as they come across the line, but the slipstream will come into play as they work down the front straightaway heading into NASCAR turn one and two. And we have a new fast time for Logan McKenzie of 59.46 compared to Andrew's 59.73. So you're looking about three tenths faster between the two. Take a look as some of these other drivers continue to keep on scrapping. Now they are reaching lap track. There is unlimited fast repairs for this event, keep in mind, for today. So that's where some drivers have already utilized that in front of them with some spins as well. Lap traffic could play a factor in this battle for a second. A bit of a check up there. As now, Benna able to still clear on by and still it is needing to close up four seconds and that's going to be the tough part especially when you do mistakes like that into the grass he goes and a big slide right to the Contact. side pod of logan mckenzie as they crash mckenzie's up on his roof Benna is also made contact and i saw a lap car also involved in that incident as well a tough break for him that will put vincent wood up into the second spot but for Cohen Evans, as Bailey Menerick will now get around for second. Cohen Evans, he's pretty much in no man's land. He's checked out in his own zip code for the most part as he is sitting in the race lead 8.3 seconds ahead as we see the replay. There's the contact wheel to wheel and then up and over they go. Some land on all four, some on their lid, unfortunately. Nowhere to go for some of the traffic as well who is trying to let these drivers on by the time and had previously done so. That was Ricky Karen in particular that was in the midst of that. 
So that extends the lead to nearly 10 seconds in this first race, just past halfway on the clock. Tim Stevens is now up inside the top five as a result of the incident with a chance to battle with Vincent Wood and Bailey. Menarek has also been able to pass on by to get the second spot as a result of some of that trouble. Certainly is as you're on board with Tim Stevens who sits in that fourth position right now. A great drive for him as they work their way down into NASCAR turn one and two. He's going to try to see if he can find a way to catch up to Vincent Wood, who's just up the road. There's a lap car in between him and Wood as they work their way into turn number three. Tim Stevens still trying to close the gap as he's got a couple of more cars behind him. That is Gregory Carcello as well as Quinn Brownell, Brunel, who are right there behind him. Vincent Wood able to take advantage of that slipping and sliding from Bailey and the number four machine. They do have Corbin Rice in the midst of things as well. He is in 10th position as lap traffic. They have also had Gregory Corsello close into the back end of this grouping as well. So the grouping of cars is expanding for position as a result of some of this lap traffic. It certainly is, and that's one of the big benefactors of lap traffic. As there goes one car, that's Bailey Menorak who goes around. Ended up getting loose, going through 13, 14 to the else's here. It looked like he may have just got it a little bit too much of the bumps and some of the grass, possibly. Looks like that indeed. That'll drop him back to sixth position right now, as we'll see the replay right here. He goes out to hit to his next apex. We'll clip the grass right about there. And around he'll go. Thankfully, we have no, you know, damage allowed on the cars when on limited fast repairs, as you pointed out. So he will rejoin and continue on his way for him as we see him. He's oh, probably... trouble for your race leader. Cohen Evans has spun around, heading back into the oval. Evans had a 10 second lead, and that is now gone because he had the Dodger race car. That was a lap car that was in the middle of the racetrack who had lost it right in front of him with no time to react. Certainly not actually makes contact with the driver. Don't know who that was, unfortunately, but he had enough of a gap, though, to still get back on the racetrack and continue. But it's now down to 1.6 seconds between him and Vincent Wood as they enter turn three. Looking ahead of our race leader, Cohen Evans, he does have no major lap traffic in front of him right now, so this could be what he needs to try to stretch out the lead between him and Vincent Wood. Especially with six estimated laps to go this upcoming time by, this is going to be very critical to rebuild that buffer tailor that they had, or he had, I should rather say, before that trouble. I think the best thing that we could do, that Conan could do right now, is just keep it on the black stuff, not try to make any more silly mistakes. Don't push the car, because that is one of the worst things you can do after making a mistake. Pushing the car to where you could possibly make another mistake, and for him, with how much of a gap he has, he could easily lose that race lead from Vincent Wood now. He had enough of a gap to where it could save him the first time, but you don't want to press your luck. You can see just how much Vincent Wood is trying to push. He's lost about six tenths this lap, though. He is dropping back and starting to fall into the clutches of Corsello. In fact, right now, Corsello, last time by a 59.352. That was quicker than the race leader by two tenths. Certainly was indeed right now as... Gregory Corsello is actually the fastest car on the track, who was the only driver, get this Justin, to break into the 58 second bracket. Under a minute is fast around New Hampshire road course, but going underneath the sub 59 seconds, that's impressive, especially with these USF 2000s. Absolutely. 1.5 years of iRacing experience entering this event for Corsello from Northeastern. And he mentioned the most valuable thing he learned for the virtual race component was how technical the car setup is. How tailored each setup is to one's driving style. He drives to the right side and quickly makes the move on Wood and locks up the brakes. Still is able to keep it on the racetrack though. Wood trying to capitalize back to the right side. Side by side as they head through the infield and through the road course portion. 
Corzello has the inside advantage through the bank corner right now. That will give him that advantage and the second place. But here comes Vincent Wood with a head of steam. Down the hill they will go. And let's see, will Wood try to take a peek to the inside? He takes a look. Can't quite get to the inside yet. As they are now making their way back to the transition onto the main oval configuration. Working through the inside of turn three and four. We've seen so many drivers make mistakes through here, Justin. But they get through cleanly. Corsello pulls it out to about half a second. Now it's the matter of, is there going to be enough time to get up to Evans? He needs to close in 3.6 seconds. They do have lap traffic ahead. Who's getting loose and off the racetrack? That car goes. And no factor, though, for the battle for second position, though. Tim Stevens is also in the wings. If this battle heats up once more, he is about three seconds behind these competitors. Been an interesting race so far for our drivers, to say the very least, here, Taylor. It certainly has, and of course, these USF 2000s are phenomenal cars to be driving. They're a very good rookie beginner class to get involved with. Of course, they're part of the Road to Indy ladder, but you also kind of see their similar cousins in SCCA competition, the Formula Atlantic class, as we like to call it in the SCCA competition, and they know a thing or two. These cars are very fun to drive. Just take it as a giant goat cart with wheels and everything like that, open wheel, of course. And with the wings, of course, as this provides a lot of great driving capability. The cars are a little bit more easier to manage compared to some other types of racing that you would see in this Road to Indy, as well as a lot of fun. Not a whole lot of horsepower, but very easy to manage if you know what you're doing and how to handle these quick and twitchy race cars. Absolutely, and you can see how twitchy some of these cars are right there. Wood getting a little bit twitchy, in fact. A little bit bobbly going through the road court section now here at New Hampshire. And keep in mind, this is the difference between the Blue Ribbon and some of the other teams is the ability to tweak their setups, remember. It's the baseline with the high downforce for the Blue Ribbon drivers while the teams from the universities were able to tweak their setups for today's race. It's certainly phenomenal that these drivers are able to make those needed adjustments in order to try and come out on top as we watch them work their way down the front straightaway here. Not a lot of time left to go. We should be seeing the white flag probably next time by for Cohen Evans right now as he is currently towards the back straightaway entering turn three as we see Quinn Brownwell currently in his car as there goes Bailey Menrick in his number four getting in the sixth position right now. How about Corbin Rice? We talked to him. He was toward the back half of the field with everyone making mistakes in front of him. He was able to get in seventh, the first car one lap down. Been impressive for Lawrence Tech driver to be able to keep himself on the racetrack after his early spins. It's definitely adapted to the racetrack as time has gone on. We're down to the final minute on the clock. Meanwhile, as Evans Still holding on to a 2.7 second lead. It is closing on down, but the buffer may be big enough here as the white flag waves final lap. The flag man waves the white flag as he sees his race leader, Cohen Evans, go through the turn one and turn two of the NASCAR Oval for the final time. Look at how superbly he's kit his marks. Even with that one mistake he had in the early, late part of this race, he has been able to keep it going and keep it in front of his competition. Even with the mistake with the lap traffic, it's been impressive from Evans to say the very least in this race. Needs to close out the final sector of this racetrack to be able to secure the victory though. Clean traffic ahead. Just has to make his way through the final couple turns. Cohen Evans from Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, making his way through the final corner. Coming to the checker flag, he wins heat one of today's event. Orsello comes home in second and Vincent Wood will roll across the stripe to round out the top three. Rest the lead lap. Go ahead, Taylor. I was saying rest of the lead lap cars are coming through. Here comes Bailey Menorak, who was up towards the top three before his incident. As a couple of cars also spinning out out of the final section. But your point, Justin. 
I was about to say a fun race to say the very least here, Taylor. It certainly was. This track provides a lot of unique challenges for our competitors here today. And I got to say, it kind of makes me want to get behind the wheel of one of these cars and go out there to have some fun with these USF 2000s as we see the 301 of Logan McKenzie come across the start finish line as he will complete his race here in the 11th position. And the last car has now crossed the stripe. That is Kenya, who will cross the stripe to close things on out. Let's take a look at your race results from heat number one. Cohen Evans coming away with the checkered flag by 2.5 seconds over Greg Corsello. Vincent Wood and Tim Stevens third and fourth with Quinn Brownell in fifth. Rounding up top six positions, Bailey. Van Elric will finish in that spot. Corbin Rice in seventh position. Rade Sharadhai finishes in eighth. Ricky Karen in ninth. Rounding out your top 10, Taylor, is Kenya. In the 11th position will be Andrew Benai, followed by Logan McKenzie in 12th with Harshida Singh Raput. In the 13th position was Sheras Rahman rounding out your 14 car field. And it looks like the Yale drivers were able to make it into today's race. During pre race, we found out that they had some technical difficulties before the race so they were glad they were able to finally get on the track to complete a couple of laps here with that we'll take a quick break you're watching podium esports for coverage of today's action of formula hybrid plus electric racing competition Welcome back to Podium Esports' coverage of Formula Hybrid Plus Electric Wheel to Wheels Grand Finale. Formula Hybrid Plus Electric gives students hands-on experience with the challenges of creating and implementing a wide variety of technologies while being part of an interdisciplinary team. Their students get the a unique opportunity to turn classroom concepts into tangible skills and to also interact with some of the most talented professionals and emerging technology industries. For more information, you can visit their website at www.formula-hybrid.org. Take the opportunity to look at some of the upcoming events as well on Podium Esports and across the iRacing world as the Esports Drift Association Megaspace takes place Saturday, June 5th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Podium Esports' Twitch channel. The MPI Cup Series, meanwhile, heads to Michigan for the penultimate Browns to set the Final Four for next week's championship four at Kansas. 
That will take place Sunday at 9.15 p.m. Eastern Time on twitch.tv forward slash podium esports. Then Monday Night Racing presented by Napa heads to Lime Rock Park for the Mazda MX-5s. It's going to take place Monday, June the 7th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Podium 2. The PCA Sim Racing Series 6 heads over to Michelin Raceway Road, Atlanta for round number 7 on Wednesday, June the 9th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on PCA Sim Racing YouTube channel. The next 10 Gen Fast Fridays takes place at Talladega Friday. June the 11th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch that on twitch.tv forward slash putting esports. Sign up for free over at maconeysetupshop.com forward slash event dash signups. It's open to anyone on the iRacing service. In the eNASCAR Road to Pro Qualified iRacing Series and its top split for the round one finale, heads over to Dover International Speedway Thursday, June the 17th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Podium Esports' Twitch channel. Overall, a lot of activity coming up and it been in a lot of activity on the racetrack, Taylor, for heat number one and entertaining one to say the very least. It certainly was, Justin. A lot of great driving amongst our competitors here today. And a lot of drivers have been able to handle the competition quite well here with the Formula Electric Hybrid Series here at New Hampshire Road Course as we continue on here for heat race number two. One of the things I'm looking forward to is seeing if anybody who had maybe some struggles in heat one learned from their mistakes to see if they can better improve their position once we get things going. That will be the interesting call that we could see from some drivers. Absolutely going to make things very intriguing for this race today to see how things play out for our competitors in heat number two. With that, I believe you're now going to be standing by with one of the drivers who just put, took part in the race. David Cania is with Taylor Burrs. Here with David Cania. David, you had a little bit of a high flying kind of race for you today with the incident that happened to you at the midway point of today's race. But overall, how were conditions on the track and your race for you? Uh, I was absolutely gutted, you know. I went down the inside. There was a gap there. He had to defend, just didn't leave the space. But, uh, you know, it's all good fun. And uh, track conditions, I think, were, were pretty decent. You know, uh, I think just reflecting on what uh, Vince uh, said about you know, cold tires, they'll get you on the first and second lap. Can't turn in as hard as you usually can, so uh, it's a bit of a struggle. But uh, overall, you know, I did what I could, and uh, at least I didn't come last. So, yeah. <laughs> that is true. But once we get ready for heat race number two, your thoughts on what you are going to be prepared to do here? Uh, definitely going to leave more space for people, uh, kind of be more cognizant of people in my mirrors and uh, leaving kind of a nice bubble around myself, not take any, not, not take too many risks because Again, uh, one one accident accident can just cost you the race. So I'm gonna do my best and setups dialed in. Uh, all the parameters are in check. So hopefully we can uh, come out on top here. All right. Well, good luck to you out there, and we look forward to seeing what you can do in heat race number two. Perfect. Thanks, guys. That is David Kenia, who will be starting to hopefully have a better results compared to his last race he had in heat race number one. Absolutely. And as a driver yourself on the iRacing service taylor what would you tweak in terms of how you would approach this racetrack knowing you've got a second opportunity here to approach the track for 20 more minutes give a little bit more room to some competitors you now know how some drivers will race around you when you are competing here try to be a little smarter when it comes to placing your car especially into the turn three section of the course where we saw a lot of incidents happen as well as just be patient. It's a 20 minute race. Yes, 20 minutes is considered a sprint race, but when it comes to these little USF 2000 cars, it can in some ways in a sense be considered an endurance race to a degree, making sure that you hit your marks and survive the track. Once you start getting into a little bit more of a groove, the tire temperatures start to build up a little bit, that's when you'd really need to press the hammer down, but be smart about it. Timing your right times to pass will be critical for drivers, as well as making sure that they don't make any mistakes whatsoever. Indeed, one of the drivers now standing by is one of our Blue Ribbon drivers for today, Logan McKenzie. And Logan, first things first, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How about you? I'm doing good. Talk us through your first heat race as it was an interesting one, I believe, for you. 
<laughs> yeah, it takes a while for the uh, tires on these things to warm up. You really don't see the lap times come in until you know, four or five, even six laps in. And uh, with the variety of, of drivers that, that the Blue Ribbons are sitting behind at the start, there's a lot of traffic to work through. Um, it really helps to have some open wheeler experience because if you're driving, uh, you know, regular, if you're driving like GT3s or even just the Mazdas, um, those can handle wheel to wheel racing a lot better than these things can. Uh, this, this really helps you practice your, your race craft because if you so much as touch someone else, then, then you're gone. And, and I did that to, uh, I believe, uh, Gregory, I misjudged his braking point. He was compensating for traffic and I was a bit more optimistic than that and spun him around and then. I got rejoined into, so you have to uh, be able to navigate traffic for sure. So in turn, what do you plan to tweak for the second race in terms of how you approach it driving wise here for this to be able to have a better result? I think my approach in the first race wasn't uh, too bad. I definitely was a little aggressive uh, through traffic. I'm feeling like the quicker I got through traffic, the less of a chance I had to get caught up in something. Um, with the field ahead of us being inverted for this heat, uh, I may sit back a little bit uh, more patiently. Uh, in that last race, at some point, I believe everyone had a spin at some point, even the leaders. Uh, so just surviving uh, can get you up to the head of the field. So just exercising more patience, especially on this track. It definitely rewards the patience, so that'll be my strategy going into this one. Indeed, and real quick, we want to ask, how did you get involved with today's action as I believe you were given a shout out, in fact, earlier in the pre-race for some of the work you've done in these cars? Yeah, so I am in another league with Wiley and he let me know about this uh, program they were doing and uh, that they needed the blue ribbon drivers for it. So um, I thought it was a, an awesome thing that they were doing, working with the students um, who don't get the chance to go on the track because of uh, what happened last year. Um, I ended up working with Corbin Rice. He was great. Uh, I believe we had the fastest time of all the uh, student blue ribbon driver pairings during the actual um, uh, pre-race uh, stuff where we were working on the setup. So that was pretty cool. Um, first time working with an engineer and giving feedback on the setup. Um, and I'm sure it was a great experience for, for Corbin um, to have that feedback from a driver and, and work on something like this. And then for us to be able to take the cars out and race them ourselves that is pretty cool as well with the setups that the students have, have developed. Once you get to the car, thank you very much for the time. Appreciate it. Look at McKenzie joining us, one of the Blue Ribbon drivers for today's event. We are just moments away from heat number two standing start for today. It's going to be interesting to see how the drivers fare in heat number two today. It was an eventful first heat here from New Hampshire. And we're about to find out how the drivers will fare in heat number two. Drivers now getting ready to roll their cars to the starting grid, and it will be... Kenya, who will be the first of the drivers to bring us to the green flag. Ricky Carroll will start in second position with Ride Sharadhai starting in row number two alongside Corbin Rice. Bailey Menarek will start in row number three alongside Quinn Browno with Greg Carcello in seventh. Cohen Evans will start in eighth and then the opposite Blue Ribbon drivers, Logan McKenzie in ninth and Chu Ben A. In 10th, Tim Stevens and Vincent Wood will be among the six rows ready to go for this standing start. And the drivers are already getting all set to go and revving up their engines for today's action. Heat number two is ready to go for the Magic Mile. And one driver with the false start, the rest of the field is off and away. Looks like to be Richard Karen, who is the one who made the false jump. That's going to cost him a major penalty here as he had to give all those positions back and then come down pit road to serve a penalty. 
not how you wanted to start things off there as Corbin Rice already with a massive send into the tire barrier he goes. Quinn Browno got clipped. Several other cars trying to strain each other out as they go to the road course section for the first time. A tough break indeed for our competitors as they work their way through the infield to the inside. Couple of cars making contact around they go and I gotta say a tough break here at the opening lap here at New Hampshire. One driver got each to lawn the curbing. Now let's take a look at this start and what was an intriguing beginning of this race. This is going to be from the view of Corbin Rice. You can see the one driver with the false jump in front and then they get towards the road course section where trouble starts to ensue. It certainly is going to be the case here as we watch on these drivers here working their way through the circuit as they come rejoining through turns one and two. Down the back straightaway, David is doing a great job of holding on to the race lead, learning from what he had the last race as more cars go around in turn three as one car makes contact with the tire barrier. And you can see he's now among the drivers quickly who have had to make their way to the pit lane as Evans, by the way, is already up to the third position. You can tell that experience, four years of sim racing experience in particular, coming into play for Evans to get himself quickly up towards the front of the field. He certainly is as they work their way through the back half of the course. Now is approaching to the NASCAR turns three and four section on the inside as they work their way to rejoin the front straightaway here. Taking a look at the track temperature right now. It's 112 degrees. It's hot. It's sticky. It's going to be a lot of less grip for these drivers here as they work their way down into NASCAR turns one and two. Kenya trying to hold on to the race lead of more than two seconds as Brownell. Going a little bit earlier on the brakes that time compared to Evans. And this is going to be the tough part is getting the passes done. Some of the best passing opportunities are right here. The run up into the infield for turns three and four inside the infield, I should say, for that part of the racetrack, as well as the run out of NASCAR turn two and the front straightaway for today. So much at stake here as they work their way down the hill to rejoin the oval configuration of the circuit. As we see the battle right now between Quinn Brownwell and Cohen Evans, they're on board with Evans now. He is making up ground. He is the fastest car on the racetrack as they come on the front straightaway. He's going to get that slipstream from Brownwell as they come down the front straightaway. Heading into turn one, he'll take a peek. He decides to stay back in line as he'll dive it to the inside through turns one and two. And these two drivers are from the same school, Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, keep in mind. And the experience levels, vastly different. Relatively little was what was described by Brennell for today's action in terms of his iRacing experience. And he talked about how a good setup can get you fast and consistent lap times. So, at the moment, he's the driver in front of the four-year iRacing veteran in Evans, who has talked about how telemetry can help a lot when it comes to learning these cars. Do you think they're going to try and work together, Taylor, if since they're from the same school here, to try and close up the gap? It is a possibility for these two to work together as teammates now, as this is a good chance for them to utilize the slipstream to try to gain ground on David as they work their way down in the front straight. Look at how much time they were able to gain right there as it is at 2.4 seconds and closing, but Brownell might actually give the position away to Cohen because he knows Cohen is the faster of the two drivers now as they dive into turn three. Brownell gives him the line, but thinks better of it. Close for comfort as that now gives the position over to Evans. Lost them a little bit of time as well. It's now more than three seconds the race lead. So the lead continues to now extend. Also, Corsello is in the midst of a battle now with one of the Blue Ribbon drivers from 10 to 4 for Ben Oz so far in this race so far. This is seven seconds back your race lead. It looks like Corsello has the momentum. The problem is he can't find the line to get the move quite yet. He certainly cannot as we watch on. 
You're all on board with McKenzie and Benai right now. Actually, Benai is right there and currently holding on to that fourth position. But Costello tried to go the long way around in that 207 as he tries to make it stick. He gets a little loose right there off corner exit, but is able to maintain and hold on as they make their way to turn three. Massive send to the outside from the 371. Can't make it stick, though. Corsello is now up into the fourth position. A plus three on the race so far. Race lead, by the way, has been shaved down dramatically this lap as well. At the inner end of the road course, it's gone from three seconds to about 1.2 seconds in the span of a lap. 1.2 and closing now making less than a second as the way through these final set of corners before they get on the front straightaway here. Time as they come across the right here. One to a 50. Point six three three. David Kanai needs to try to find the speed he needs because he is losing it too quickly to the rest of the field. Under 14 minutes to go on the clock for this event as Evans now back within 1.2 seconds. Rano has stay, stabilized the gap distance to 3.7 seconds, by the way, as we follow on board now with the second place driver. And it's been very impressive what Evans has been able to do as well. Keep in mind the work that this entire program for Formula Hybrid plus Electric has been able to do. Been around for years. Started off in 2006 taking place each spring at this facility with the work they've done. As the leader has just had a crash, the leader has just had a crash from the unbelievable. Uh, see what happens right here as we see David Kanai, another mistake, ooh, just clips that barrier right there. Hit the tire barrier, yes, the attenuator wall for the pit lane. That will give the race lead over to Cohen Evans once again, and as he pulls out another lead over. So Cohen Evans now in the lead over Brownell. Porcello in third. Bene is in fourth position. McKenzie in fifth. With sixth position now going to Menorek. Take a look at that battle for second position. It's starting to heat up. Corsello, again, reeling in these drivers right in the middle of the corner. Corsello's definitely a man on a mission right now, trying to find his way around Quinn Brownell as they work their way down the front straightaway, heading into turns one and two. See if he can get the toe. Trying to get the run clipped a little bit of the difference in banking, there's a slight bit of difference in banking in turns one and two, Taylor, here at this racetrack. And it can slow you down if you hit it the wrong way here. That's why it's a little bit best to not hug that inside lane. It's better to go to the middle groove to try to propel you and get the momentum you need. These cars are momentum based. Yes, they can be quick on the throttle, but as long as you keep the momentum up through the corners, that will be the biggest factor to help you get a good finish or win today's race. Lap traffic is ahead. Karen is right up the road from these competitors as well. A little bit wide for Brownell. Here comes Corsello as he makes the move to the inside and move Corsello up to second. Remember, Corsello closed up the gap to about a couple seconds from about this distance back before as the lap car gets loose in front of the battle for position. Tough break right there for that driver as he is going through turns one and two. Let's take a look, that was Karen. And you can see this was a sketchy moment for the battle for third position that was side by side when this happened. Oh, that's a good way to wake yourself up in the middle of the race. If you get a little tired, just see a car spinning in front of you. Not what you want to see, though, at that part of the racetrack either. No, certainly not. But he was able to quickly get around and move on. But unfortunate for the driver involved in that incident here. He'll get back out on track though momentarily. 
is now wanting to move up into the top three as the new fast lap set by Evans of 59.354. Last time by the stripe. To the inside this time. Then I try to wrap it around the yellow line, in fact. Slipping all the way to the third line goes Brownell. Brownell able to get the better run, though, coming off the corner. Preferred line this time to go into the road course section. And here comes Logan McKenzie taking advantage all of a sudden. Oh, he had a back out, though, because Ben Awa is going to get clip him right there along with Quinn, Quinn Brownwell as well. So a tough break for him because he was about to take two for one. And a tire to tire contact there amongst the competitors. Been able to get the better run, though, this time to the quarter. McKenzie now trying to set things on up to try and get by into the fourth position. Under 10 minutes on the clock for heat number two. A little bit wide that time for the 371. Still has the better momentum. Brownell again overrunning a bit of the corner, and that seems to be his struggle spot. It's the run through turns 12, 13, and 14. The S's here at New Hampshire. It certainly is. That's one of the critical areas where we've seen a lot of mistakes happen, especially late in the going. We saw Ben Bailey Menorak make mistakes there. We just saw our former race leader, of course, David Kenai, make a mistake there, as well as several other drivers in heat race number one. So, unfortunately, that section seems to be the Achilles heel to some of these drivers oh. here. And as Bruno has had a crash. I'm not sure what to say on this one. Let's go on board with Brennell as they enter turn number three. Hits his apex. And, oh. Well, we, can we get maybe a behind the camera of the rear end of the car? Maybe. I think he might have hit the bit of the curving for that to happen. The best way I can describe in that situation. Looks like to be the case as we see here. Hits the curb and lift off. Not high enough to where I can join the Podium Esports space program, but he was close. We'll, we'll give him a, a five on the, the takeoff on that one. Again, no damage for today's race. So keep that in mind as Logan McKenzie goes into the battle for third position. Last time by, he gained about half a second on the 371. Seven minutes to go on the clock this time. As McKenzie will get around Andrew, I think Andrew was able to be able to realize how quickly McKenzie was closing up on him, did the sportsman thing and let Logan by. That'll move now Logan McKenzie up to the third spot. But a little bit off into the sand as well at the same time. Lose a bit of momentum now and drop behind by about three car lengths. With seven estimated laps to go, and you can see McKenzie trying to break a bit of the toe that we've seen coming into play a couple times through this part of the racetrack. We certainly have seen several drivers make mistakes through NASCAR turn one and two right now as they make the run to turn number three, hitting down towards the apex. It gives a little bit of room for both drivers as Andrew tried to close the gap right there, but to no avail, couldn't make the time needed as it's now lost time. Seven tenths of a second separate the two drivers. Question is, can Andrew get back up there for the position? Because in this section, he did actually get a little bit of the sand tailor that caused a little bit of that slowdown effect and that pass by effect. So if you're Andrew, how do you get back up there to try and get a shot at Logan? You need to try to hit your apex a little bit better and not make mistakes such as hitting the sand. Sand is not your friend when it comes to this type of racing for sure. Under six minutes to go on the clock. The lead is stabilized at five seconds. New purple lap though from McKinsey. A 59-294. Impressive run for the Blue Ribbon Driver, the highest running of the Blue Ribbon Driver so far. The gap is starting to close back up, though. It's one of the main focal points so far. Keep in mind that the highest running drivers when it comes to student teams, it is, at the moment, the electric teams. Cohen Evans, 208 leaning that way. When it comes to the hybrid teams, Highest running driver is still the number three machine. Currently, Kenya, who is still held on to the fifth position after having that incident from the race lead with the attenuator just a few laps ago. 
certainly is. So a great drive for David in his class, but not for the overall lead right now as we see one of our drivers, that is Logan McKenzie, get around one of the lap traffic cars. He's about five seconds back from Gregory Corsello and about 10 seconds back from your race leader. And with four and a half minutes left to go, it's a tall order needed for McKenzie. Even more so for Corsello to try and close up. And Corsello has been having a bit of struggles. The close in now is coming back for the battle for third. And Andrew definitely wants that position back. It looks like Taylor. It's the matter of, can he get it? Driving and catching up to one driver is one thing. Passing is a complete and different other opportunity as we'll see Andrew try to fight back and get on the podium here for this race as they work their way down the hill to rejoin back on the oval section of the course here as we continue to watch on between the two. Andrew's hitting his marks and doing what he needs to do but he's running out of time under four minutes to go. And the interesting thing is going to be how this all fares out. McKenzie definitely does not want to provide any toe to the back end from his back end to Bene. Once more, under four minutes now to go on the clock. So we look for the back end. And the gap seems to be slowly gaining ground each time now to this section too. It certainly is as we watch on this battle for the position here of third as they work their way down the field here. Working through the bank section of the course, a great battle indeed. And again, want to give a shout out to the work that Formula Hybrid does because those who do not know, competition for interdisciplinary design and engineering brings a challenge for undergraduate and graduate university students. For all the work they've done here on iRacing, it's been very impressive to say the very least, Taylor. It certainly has, Justin. The hard work that goes behind this team is phenomenal and a really a great opportunity for the Formula Hybrid and Electric team. Make sure to go visit them because they have so much information and a lot of great, amazing minds behind this to help further the future of, for, of hybrid and electric racing technology. Which is going to be very big in the future, I think, Taylor, because especially in the 2030s in particular, it's going to be very interesting how racing goes with the technology that's coming into play as Evans is currently coming towards two estimated laps to go. It certainly is, Justin. And one thing to keep in mind when it comes to the future of hybrid and electric technology, you know, we have it in Formula E, of course, which is the well-known. And then, of course, some of the new racing series that we've seen involving electric cars and how hybrid has always been really a main staple in the world of sports car racing and motor racing since the late early 2010s for the most part with diesel and TDI technology. So it's phenomenal to see the growth since then to now and only it's going to get better as the future progresses. I want to give a shout out to some of these drivers who continue to roll their way around the race track we talked about. Kenya, who's currently running in fifth position, you still have the first dropper one lap down being Sherrod High at the moment. It's incredible all these programs, the work they've done to be able to get themselves up to speed with sim racing over the past few weeks and for this grand finale. As these drivers will now come to the final lap, final minute on the clock, one estimated lap to go this time. One more time for our competitors here as we watch on and see Cohen Evans as you're now watching Bailey Menorak work his way through the back half of the road course before rejoining. But for Cohen Evans, he's going to enter turn three right here before going off outside of the oval and through the road course section. He's been able to keep the gap stabilized this time, Taylor, compared to the last time, too. He's kept it at five seconds and no mistakes and no trouble for this race. Certainly no mistakes whatsoever for Cohen Evans. I think he learned a little bit from his last one and took his time around lap traffic to survive and not have any mistakes whatsoever. Could we see him form the clean sweep? Well, we'll find out as the clock's at 10 seconds. We'll see as now Evans will make his way down the front stretch. One more time, checkered flag waves. Cohen Evans gets the sweep. 
He wins the second heat for Formula Hybrid Plus Electric Wheel to Wheels Grand Finale. What a drive for Cohen Evans. Here comes Gregory Corsello. He'll come across in second. Logan McKenzie, your podium finishers for heat race number two. As the rest of the field works their way through, a lot of better driving, I think, in this one we saw compared to heat race number one. A few more drivers finishing on the lead lap here. So a great drive as we watch on the battle 4P9 between Sharade and Vincent Wood. Those drivers are keeping things busy for one of the final positions on track with a bit of contact. A big save and Wood hits the rumble strips. Sharad High ends up getting loose. And Sharad High will end up getting the ninth position as a result. Ricky Carroll will come across the stripe as well. Vincent Wood will rumble his way forward into the final position on the racetrack as a result of that situation. Great battle at the end of the race as Cohen Evans gets the sweep. Corsello gets second. McKenzie and Bene round out the top four with Kenya in fifth position. Then Menarek finished in sixth spot with Brownell in seventh. Stevens in eighth. Sharad High in eighth. Sharad High, I should rather say, with Wood rounding out your top ten. The last of the drivers on trap cor track cor Corbin Bryce and Ricky Karen. An intriguing race, Taylor, to say the very least. Let's bring in, once again, Mike Campbell. Mike Chapman, I should rather say, the director for Formula Hybrid plus Electric. Mike, thanks for joining us once again. A great event here today with both of these heats. That was just amazing. Uh, you know, can't say enough about the, the time and the effort that the students put into it and uh, the fun that they had today. And also, I'll, I'll circle back to the folks, you folks at Podium Esports. Really appreciate what you've done for us. New England Region, SCCA, iRacing, and, and McLaren Applied. Um, you, guys, you guys just made this happen, so really do appreciate it. Absolutely. A great event here today and a great time on iRacing overall as well here, Mike, especially with the work put in for in turn their final scores for this event. Yeah, and you know this is this is only the the capstone. This was the fun part for the uh, for bragging rights. Uh, the whole co the whole competition really centers around the effort that the students put in to design and build a hybrid or a battery electric vehicle car. So they go through several different events. They go through the design event, which is a report plus a presentation. The optimal hybrid present uh, event this year again report and presentation, project management, where they can track how their project is going through the year, and then this one, the virtual racing challenge. So there's a lot of work that goes in, and it takes teams a year to two years to put a car together. So I want to announce right now the uh, the points winners for this year. These will be the results will be posted up on our website on uh, on Monday, and the teams will have 48 hours to ask any questions that they want to. But uh, I'll give you the rundown. In the electric class, uh, tied for 10th was Lafayette and Dartmouth College. At ninth place was Boston University. Eighth place. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. Seventh place, Indiana University, Purdue, University, Indianapolis. Sixth place, Illinois Institute of Technology. Fifth place, Lawrence Tech. Fourth place, University of Vermont. And then the folks that will be bringing home the trophies, Yale University in third, University of Waterloo in second, and Northeastern University in first. So fantastic job, guys, all of you. Um, now in the hybrid class, in fifth place, University of Wyoming. Fourth place, Milwaukee School of Engineering. And the folks that will bring home trophies, SRM College of Engineering in India for third place, University of Victoria in Canada for second, and RV College of India, uh, RV College of Engineering in India for first. So again, just a, a fantastic job all you guys did this year. 
An absolutely fantastic event and fantastic year indeed, Mike. Anyone else you want to thank or anything else you want to add before we let you go? Yeah, I really want to want to point out the uh, the, the contribution that our sponsors make. I mean, they, they send us volunteers that help us to score and run the events. Uh, they give us monetary support and they also they interview and they recruit our engineers who come to the event. So just real quick this year, uh, the IEEE, who has been a, a sponsor of ours since the beginning, uh, Toyota, Air School of Engineering up at Dartmouth and New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Those are our top tier uh, sponsors. Um, after that, the New England Region SCCA, Intralinks and SCA, SAE International for the gold level, silver level, Haggerty and McLean Fogg, and the bronze level, BAE Systems, Fiberglass, E Propelled, Porsche Nashua, Test Equity, Keysight Technologies, TomTom. Tom, Weld family and Jenna Pollock, and uh, you know again we can't make this happen without our suppliers, um, and that includes I Racing and McLaren Applied. And one of the sponsors that's coming up is is XL Fleet, and we certainly hope to see them up at the track next year. So uh, uh, really, thanks thanks to all you uh, all the sponsors, all the volunteers that helped us put on this uh, this competition this year. We really appreciate everything you do. For for us and for the students. Thank you very much for the time, Mike, and congratulations on a well-run grand finale. Hey, thank you. Once again, I'd like to thank Mike Chapman, the director of Formula Hybrid Plus Electric as well. I'd like to thank the contributions from Jessica Kinsey, the coordinating manager for Formula Hybrid Plus Electric as well. Now joining us in the broadcast booth is one of the drivers who had a very solid day today in both the heats, and Andrew Benna. And Andrew, how was it out there, first of all? It was a whole lot of fun. Um, I was glad to be out there uh, representing Formula Hybrid um, and, uh, you know, representing New England Region SCCA uh, and was glad to be out there uh, fighting on a slippery track with all of those students. Overall, what were some of the difficulties when it comes to today in terms of the track itself to try and adapt to the changing conditions as well as to try and battle for position because i've seen at one point you were in a battle with logan where you ended up hitting the sand trap and losing a bit of time there yeah uh, it was it's all a balancing act uh you know this track i uh, is very very unique in the way that it has a whole lot of um different features that you have to be able to master um uh, you know being just a little bit off you know by a couple inches uh is catastrophic so it's a balancing act of where do i make the move and where do i just sit behind and wait indeed when it comes to today what do you want people to take away from today's grand finale the most in your opinion i want uh, everybody to see just how talented uh these students are um you know they students not only uh had to build their own setups which for some of them had never even touched i racing before um they came into uh, doing this competition. They learned how to use the sim. They learned how to build setups from the sim. Uh, they took everything that they learned uh, from uh, all of their classes and their fellow students and uh, brought it all together today. And, you know, this is a really, really uh, good look at the future for some uh, future engineers and possibly even drivers coming up into the professional ranks. Uh, and so I, for one, am very excited to see just how far these uh, students will go. And I am excited to see what the future holds for all of our students here. Anyone you want to give a shout out to before we let you go? I have to give a big shout out to Wiley uh cox um mike chapman and jess kinsey because you know they allowed me to come into this and just show a little bit of you know uh what's happening and uh they did a lot of this work and uh came in with a big challenge of not knowing what i racing really uh could do and were open-minded and willing to learn and uh provided a great event for everybody Thank you very much once again for the time, Andrew. 
Thank you, guys. And Trebena joining us once more. He finished in fourth in heat number two. Now, Taylor Burris is standing by with Winner, one of our competitors for today's race, and Bailey Menarek. Here with Bailey Menarek from the Milwaukee School of Engineering, part of the chassis team. Bailey, you put on a great performance. Had a couple of issues in heat race number two, but overall, your thoughts on how this race went for you? I'm super happy with it. It was a ton of fun being able to get on track with everybody. Um, my goal was to kind of stay on the lead lap and not have too many errors. I definitely had a few here and there, but I was happy with my consistent ish times. What do you think is probably one of the most difficult points when it comes to racing here at the road course in New Hampshire? Um, definitely managing all the people on track. I know all of our testing was all done, like other people have said, with just single cars on track. So managing your spacing and other cars on track, as well as the tires. So early on in that second heat, the tight, cold tires kind of snuck up on me after getting used to the warm ones from the previous. So. Well, tell us a little bit about your position with the Milwaukee School of Engineering, part of the chassis team. What is your goal as well as what your responsibility is with that? Yeah, so this year would have been my fourth year on the team. I was the chassis team lead for um, two previous years and handed it down to some underclassmen this year. Um, we've been working on a lot of suspension tuning as well as designing an entire new uh, tube frame chassis for uh, later competitions. Well, it's really appreciative on that. And what do you think the importance is with learning about the chassis in the world of motorsport? I know, and at least for me, as being an oval as well as a race competitor myself, with the importance of knowing what the chassis is. But for some of those who are new to the world of motor racing, could you explain that a little bit more in depth? Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot to be gained from having your car set up to where the driver is comfortable and um, kind of balancing that driver comfort with um what the car can actually accomplish. Um, so many different aspects that you can dive into getting the car to feel um, and handle the track the way you want it to. Uh, awesome learning experience for everybody. Well, before we let you go, Bailey, anyone you would like to give a shout out to? Oh yeah, I'd like to thank everybody, friends and family that were able to hop on the stream today and watch, and as well as the MSOE team and school for letting me represent them today. Of course, that is Bailey Menarak from the Milwaukee School of Engineering, and Justin has caught up with David Kenya from the University of Victoria. Yes, indeed, a ve virtual vehicle tuner for that university. And David, first things first, talk us through the final heat race for you, where you were leading at one point in the early stages. Yeah, so a bit of a bit of a mistake there going into the final turn. Just managed to nick that corner. Um, kind of gutted about that again in in fashion. But again, uh, just lack of consistency. And you know, I put in the hours, I put in the time to try and get consistent. But you know, like I mentioned before, all it takes is one mistake and and you're out. So you know, I try I tried my best and I had a lot of fun. You know, the guys uh, in the in the call were really great and and we had a really good time. So. And talk us through some of that preparation to get yourself here overall. You talked about it a little bit before in between heats one and two, but to prepare the way you have, what was that like to get yourself up to speed with the sim? Uh, I was definitely a big learning curve. Uh, I, I came from a set of Corsa and, and for, uh, I guess Formula One 2020, the games and completely different in iRacing. It's a completely different sim and, and, and experience overall. So, I mean, when we were doing the, the setup for the competition itself, it took a lot of uh, trial and error, you know, identifying and making notes, you know, you turn in oversteer, uh, exit oversteer, what kind of characteristics uh, the car is experiencing. And kind of the, the big biggest challenge was uh, determining if it was m my problem as a driver or was it a car problem? So kind of finding that medium and just putting in the laps and, and getting consistent, you know, uh, taking advantage of the AI racing that uh, that iRacing has. And uh, again, just kind of putting in laps, I think was the biggest thing. Overall, what do you hope to take overall or from this experience with sim racing and iRacing with the side of things to the future, really? for your time with your Formula Hybrid plus electric team, as well as for your future career? 
Uh, definitely. So I actually uh, was competing in Formula SAE, the internal combustion, for the past couple years, and mm -hmm. kind of came on to the hybrid team in my in my final year here as I graduate in August um, to kind of look pick up some new things, pick up uh, some knowledge, and and work with some different people to try and expand my understanding of of race car vehicle dynamics and powertrain overall and kind of throughout the years you know competing in this competition i definitely developed a passion for motorsport and it was something that i've i would never even investigated before and looked at so um i've been you know applying and looking to see if there's any positions out there for me i definitely want to pursue this as a career i'm a very competitive and driven person so even though today was just for fun i you know i i held myself to a high standard and uh and definitely want to see if I can apply my skills and uh, to the real life thing. So uh, definitely, if there is uh, any opportunities out there in motorsport, I'm I'm down to to try it. Anyone who want to give a shout out to real quick before we let you go? Absolutely, shout out to to my team out, out on the island in Victoria, Jules, Cayenne, David, our lead, and uh, all the all the team members that have been working really hard for the car and the competition. You guys are doing great. Uh, I guess also to our uh, our blue ribbon driver uh, and uh, Vince, you know, we got some really good feedback from him during the actual tuning part of the competition and just getting that really good key uh, key points from them throughout the uh, throughout the race and throughout the whole competition has been really uh, beneficial. So thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much for the time, David. Yeah. David Kenia joining us once more for the University of Victoria based in Canada. Now, from RV College, it's Haride Sharanhai. He's with Taylor Burris. Here with Haride. Haride, you had a great performance out there on the track, but tell us from firsthand your thoughts on the circuit, the car, and uh, your first time actually out there on this iRacing service. Yeah, so um, the car, the circuit was really great. And I mean, the reverse grid allowed me to stay up front for just a tiny bit before I beached my car and was stored back to the pit stops. But apart from that, yeah, everything else was really nice. What do, can you take back and learn for the next time you hop on the iRacing service? Well, one thing for sure is that, you know, the more time you spend on uh, such a simulation racing and so on, it, it gives you a lot of more advantage, a lot more experience. And uh, coming into today was my first race, in fact, and in the first session, I didn't know that I had to bring myself to the grid by pressing the button. And I thought it would do that by itself. So some very small mistakes that, we, you know, uh, we know to avoid for next time and a lot of experience gained. With that, anyone you would like to say thank you to Harade for today's race and for your career? I'd like to give a massive shout out to my entire team, Ashwa Racing, uh, all of my batchmates who helped us build the prototype this year, and all of the juniors who are joining us and who are now starting out on their journey through FS and FH. All right, well, that is Harari Sharadhai, who comes home with a great finish here today. And, Justin, you've caught up with our Blue Ribbon driver, Mr. Logan McKenzie. Yes, indeed. And, Logan, first things first, an impressive final race of the day today. A podium finish for you. Talk us through working your way from the back to the front in these heat races today. Yeah, the uh, starts are, are pretty hectic. Uh, everyone piles into to turn three, and um, on those colder tires, it's chaos. Um, there was a little bit of a pileup on this first lap. I think there were two. It was a pretty clean heat from there on out as uh, Greg and I sort of worked our way uh, up the field together. Um, this track, you are fighting the track just as much as you are fighting other people. Uh, my, my two biggest overtakes in that heat, both of the uh, people in front of me, uh, Quinn and, and Andrew, just, just kind of went off track and I, I took advantage. Um, you g can gain a lot by just staying on track. And when you get onto that, that the runoff area and it banks away from the track, like Andrew got into the dirt, it just sucks the car off uh, of the track. And at that point, you lose so much time. So just keeping it on the track. I wasn't able to, to drive as quickly as the two guys ahead. Um, that's not just them having good setups. You can't just put in a good setup and do a sub-59. That's that's some great racing from, from Greg, especially, uh, to put in those lap times. But um, it was definitely a, a lot of fun. This was a much cleaner heat. I think uh, the guys learned a lot from the first one. 
Absolutely. And overall, what do you hope to take most for working with the Formula Hybrid Plus Electric drivers throughout this program? Because a couple of them have shouted you out as well for some of the work they had with this program. Yeah, I think this program is fantastic. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think it was great. Um, for me, it was a great experience to have that back and forth with the engineer and uh, work to get the car dialed in um, for them to race it. And, and it's also great to see um, these students get that opportunity. And of course they get to, to go and race their setups as well. But I really hope they continue doing this, uh, not just uh, in the real world, uh, but also as a supplementary thing in iRacing, because I'd love to continue to take part in it. Um, I think it's a great experience for, for both sides, both student and driver, because a lot of these guys on iRacing, you never get a chance to interact with an engineer. Uh, a lot of these guys are making their own setups uh, in-house. You don't really interact with the engineer until you get up to the, the top, top levels and you get on teams. So uh, um, really great experience, and I, I hope to do it again. Anyone else you want to give a shout out to before we let you go or anyone else you want to thank? Uh, just thank all the, the guys that helped put this together, um, as well as uh, Corbin, who was my engineer. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. I think it was uh, great, and I appreciate everyone who, who made this happen. Thank you very much for the time, Logan. Thank you. Logan McKenzie joining us once more. One of the Blue Ribbon drivers for today's action. He finished third in heat number two. Overall, it was a competitive day to say the very least. And we'll bring in Mike Chapman once more. And Mike, a lot of work put in for this event as talked about a little bit earlier. Talk us through overall everything in terms of all the people who put in this preparation to be able to get to where this event was today. You'd think after a year, I'd be, I'd be willing to uh, understand how this stuff works. <laughs> so thank you for the, the shout out there. It is just a tremendous amount of work that everybody puts in. Uh, there are most of our, of, our, um, of our folks that work on this are volunteers. Uh, it's, you know, we, uh, we do it for the love of it. And uh, I want to give a, a really big shout out to Jess Kinsey, our coordinating manager of Formula Hybrid Plus Electric. Jess wasn't able to, to make it here today, but uh, she just puts in a tremendous amount of time to, to pull this whole uh, this whole competition together, all the different facets. And I know that, that being virtual was difficult and we're both, we're, we're looking forward to being back on track uh, next year. As we, our tagline for this year is kind of vroom by Zoom in 21 and back on track in 22. So we're, we're really looking forward to that. Um, and then the other, the other folks that I'd like to give a, a shout out to. I mean, we've we've said the New England Region SCCA, Podium Esports, I Racing, uh, McLaren Applied. Uh, without your help, this this definitely would not have happened at all. And you know, we have a, a lot of other sponsors that uh, both send us volunteers. They act as mentors. They they judge the different events. And it's really it's important for us that, that um, our sponsor engineers come and work with the students because that's what really makes it worthwhile. And you know, over the years, we've sent students to, to places like Ford, GM, Fiat Chrysler, SpaceX, Tesla, Boeing, Lucid Motor, BAE Systems. So, you know, a lot more than just the, the typical auto companies. And uh, this year for our sponsor, as I mentioned them before, but I'll mention them again, you know, Thayer School of Engineering at Dartmouth, the, the students at Thayer School 15 years ago when their car was banned at another event, got together and organized Formula Hybrid. Uh, so it's, it's them to thank for where we are today. Um, the IEEE was an early sponsor and helped to guide us. Toyota has been a, a sponsor from the first days, and then the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Without them and their support, we couldn't hold the uh, 
the event that we normally have in the end of April, early May. Uh, New England Region SCCA, Intralinks, which helps with the, with the data management, and SAE International for our gold sponsors. Uh, silver sponsors, Haggerty, uh, who did our t-shirts this year, McLean Fogg, who does uh, automotive fasteners, gave, gave some great, both of those uh, companies uh, gave some, some great uh, sponsor expo uh, presentations. And then, you know, the bronze ones, BAE Systems, Fiberglass, E-Propelled, Porsche Nashua, Test Equity, Keysight Technologies, TomTom, Tom, the Weld family, and Jenna Pollock. And I really, I want to mention one, they aren't in the list here as sponsors, but we were very thrilled this year to have Pat Simmons, who is the CTO of Formula One, uh, gave a sponsor expo for us. And that was hosted by Alexis Abramson, and, and she's the Dean of the Thayer School of Engineering. So we had two top flight engineers with Alexis and Pat giving a, a talk about the, where where racing has been, where it's going, what are the technologies involved. So, you know, we look forward to having that interaction between industry and Formula Hybrid. It really makes us go, and uh, we can't be more more thankful for all the folks that helped us out this year. Thank you very much once again for this great event, Mike, and thank you very much for the time. All right, thank you guys. Much appreciated. Mike Chapman once more from Formula Hybrid Plus Electric joining us once more. Shout out to all those who have worked as part of this event, as well as the many sponsors for said event. Now, Taylor, I want to turn to you. Your thoughts on how this event played out for today, especially with a lot of great racing. All for, again, a great program and a great cause. It's certainly great to see that motorsports is not going anywhere, that there is a future for the young great minds that we just saw out here on the track, as well as those who took part and helped preparing. Even though they couldn't go to New Hampshire Motor Speedway to showcase their actual cars, they were still able to get involved and learn and apply what they've learned to showcase the future. And that's what racing is all about, showcasing the future technology and safety innovations of all things racing, as well as what we can use to apply in the on the actual roads that we drive on the streets for, such as you, myself, and everyone who's watching. That's what's so great about motorsports and why it's probably, in my opinion, one of the greatest tools in all of sports. This is something that helps us to learn and apply to use in the world of actual car and development to where we can be able to have greener environment possibilities to save fuel and electrics as well as using that to the best of our abilities and showcasing how great the human mind can be. Absolutely. Overall, a great event to follow along with for today. We'd like to thank everyone for today's action. And go through the coming events for today's action across podium esports in the iRacing world. First things first, at the moment, it is the Esports Drift Association Mega Space taking place on Saturday, June the 5th. That started at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch that on the main podium esports Twitch channel. Then tomorrow, it is the MPI Cup Series at Michigan, Sunday, June the 6th, at the penultimate round for that season. That will set the final four for next week's championship four at Kansas. Again, 9.15 p.m. Eastern time. You can catch that on the main podium sports Twitch. Then, Monday Night Racing presented by Napa heads to Lime Rock Park for the Mazda MX-5s. That will take place at 8 p.m. Eastern time on podium two. Then, you can find the PCA Sim Racing Series 6 at Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta for round number seven on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. PCA Sim Racing YouTube channel. Next Gen Fast Fridays. Heads to round five at Talladega Friday, June the 11th, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time at Podium Esports. You can sign up for free over at McConeySetupShop.com or slash event signups. It is open to anyone on the iRacing service. The eNASCAR Road to Pro Qualifying iRacing Series round one finale heads to Dover. Meanwhile, to determine which drivers go to the top 70 and round number two. That will take place 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can catch Top Split on Podium Esports' Twitch channel. Once again, we'd like to thank you and thank all of the people and also the companies who support Formula Hybrid Plus Electric that 
seen listed on screen. Without them, none of this would be possible. For Mike Chapman, for Jess Kinsey, and everyone at Formula Hybrid Plus Electric, for James Pike, Gary Sexton, Cisco Scaramuza, and John Theodore at Podium Esports, for producer Ryan Bauer, and for my colleague Taylor Burris, I'm Justin Prince. Thank you so much for watching today's broadcast of the Formula Hybrid Plus Electric Wheel-to-Wheel -wheel Grand Finale. Enjoy the rest of your day.